feel like the, we need the Jeopardy music right now. <laughs> well, there might be something happening. All right, well, we're ready to go, it looks like. Uh, I want to welcome everybody for um, coming in person tonight to this public meeting about the packet landing alternative analysis project that the town has um, been working on thanks to a grant from um, Mass Coastal Zone Management. We've got Representative Steve McKenna um, from Coastal Zone Management here tonight. Um, we're very appreciative of, of the funding opportunity. Um, with me tonight are the uh, consultants and engineers for the project, which are um, Woods Hole Group and is it now tie and bond? Uh, uh, but what this project is all about, and um, I believe um, we've got a slideshow that actually shows some really neat, like time lapses from packet landing as far back as 1850. So. Over the years, you'll see the changes. Um, the thought process here is to mediate climate change, sea level rise, which we know are real things. We're seeing it in front of our eyes. Um, to mediate these issues, we need to become more resilient at packet landing. And what this project is all about is developing alternatives. So there's some conceptual plans you've seen around the room. And at the end of this project, the town is going to select one of these alternatives and continue to seek funding sources and try to get to the next phase, which would be uh, final design, permitting, issuing bid specs uh, to then go on to construction and implementation of the selected design. Um, so that's what it's about. I'm going to turn it over to the professionals. And um, again, thank you for all that are here and all at home watching. Um, Brittany, would you like to sure. take it from here? Yeah, thanks, Bill. That was a great introduction. Um, we're honored to be here and, and help the community move forward in this resiliency project. Um, my name is Brittany Hoffnagel. I'm a um, uh, climate resiliency specialist with Woods Hole Group. I work with municipalities and helping plan um, projects to to be more resilient to, to sea level rise and storm surge in particularly. Uh, my colleague here is also working on this project is Cole Bateman. He is a um, project manager for Ty and Bond and you'll get to hear from him a little bit further into this presentation. So here we are. Uh, we are talking about packet landing today. Um, and I want to thank everyone in the room who's come to learn about this resiliency project and has an invested interest in where this, this site is going. So just to set up, I'm going to set the stage for how we got to this project and how you all came to find yourselves in this room. I'm going to give a brief summary of the site, talk about the project goals, go through the project process, and then discuss next steps. So setting the stage, so in 2019, we worked th with the town to um, hold the municipality uh, vulnerability preparedness planning workshop, which brought a bunch of town staff together to talk about climate change, the impacts to the community, and discuss how those impacts might affect the, the town of Yarmouth. So, the result of this report was a top recommended action, which for this community was an infrastructure vulnerability assessment and repair. So then in 2022, 2023, we went uh, forward with an NVP action grant, which then aimed to address that recommended action. So the outcome of this vulnerability assessment was really looking at the town municipal infrastructure, so town buildings, beach facilities, parking lots, anything that was managed or owned by the town to see how vulnerable those are to sea level rise and storm surge. One of the major outcomes of this report was that Packet Landing Marina is extremely vulnerable and is important for resiliency efforts and goals. So here we are. 
We then wanted to take this top vulnerability further. So in 2023 and 2024, we applied for a CZM Coastal Resiliency Grant. So we were awarded, um, the state provided about $80,000 to conduct a um, alternatives assessment, which was um, the completion of three conceptual designs for potential projects in order to increase the resiliency. So I hope this timeline kind of gives you an idea of how we've gotten to this stage and why you are here sitting where you are to, to provide feedback and comments. So I'm sure many of, you, many of you are familiar with Packet Landing Marina. It's a small municipally owned uh, landing that provides uh, critical access, um, critical functions. Um, it's really important for commercial fishing with the, the winch systems available for the fishermen. Um, the town does store some emergency response boats for DNR and fire. Um, that is critical for emergency response. And then also provides uh, recreational boat slips for recreational use. What this site does not offer are those other recreational services like kayak launch, um, and other access to the public. So this is a public marina, but does have some site restrictions. So the challenges for Packet Landing, uh, the, the, the existing conditions at Packet Landing, does, uh, it does experience flooding from a periodic storm and extreme water level events. And so um, it's not getting flooded every high tide, but periodically throughout the year it does get inundated by extreme water levels. Um, the consequences of getting flooded is it could restrict access, not only for the fishermen and recreational boat, boat operators, but restricts access for emergency response. Um, it also, continuous inundation could also have a wear and tear on the infrastructure and the equipment located at the marina and potentially decrease economic benefits if fishermen or recreational boat slips um, can't do normal business if they can't get access to the docks. So I just want to, you know, this marina historically, as Bill mentioned, has been an important uh, space for the town of Yarmouth. So these are a series of pictures of, you know, not only is this a space that's used today, but has been historically important. So these are just a series of photos showing uh, uh, packet landing in the past. So here we have a historic railroad bridge on a raised causeway, and packet landing would be in this area. Then at some point in time, that bridge converted to a, a more opened bridge system. We have some vegetation in the middle of the river, and again, packet landing on the far side here. And then another photo, you can start to see that armored shoreline, you know, horse and buggy on this um, low bridge, very different from the bridge that's there today. And then a picture from a stereotypical 60s, 70s postcard. So public parking and the dock and the boats coming right along that armored shoreline. So this space has been used. You know, in the past, it's been recreationally used, used for fishermen, commercial fishermen, boating, and things like that. So it's this, this uh, space has a historical legacy, and we want to maintain this legacy into the future. And that's one of the major purposes of this project, is to really maintain this space as a usable space that's resilient through time. And we know that it's vulnerable today, uh, especially in those existing high water events. But in the future, we're expected to see even more flooding on a more frequently frequent basis, but also on a daily basis. So this is um, the state MCF, uh, the Massachusetts State's sea level rise projections um, using mean high water as an indicator for future flooding. And so on a daily basis, the parking lot is expected to be flooded daily as soon as 2050. And then the entire parking lot is expected to flood on a daily basis in 2070. And so we know that already today that it's vulnerable to those extreme water events that maybe happen one, once or twice a year. But knowing the, the, the patterns and the projections of sea level rise, you can expect to see increased inundation on a daily basis. 
We can also use the state's uh, storm surge model results. So here we're showing the results of the 2030 uh, Massachusetts Coast flood risk model that basically describes your annual, your percentage, your chance of becoming flooded um, any given year. So standing in the parking lot in these dark blue colors, you're roughly having a 100% chance any given year to get flooded by a storm. Now the, 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 the marina itself is not a flood pathway. So if the marina gets flooded, it's not gonna lead to broad expanded flooding throughout the, the town of Yarmouth. So with discussions with Bill, you know, we, we understand that the Packet Landing Marina could withstand these periodic storms that do come through. Um, but the, so, but just, in, just to give you an indication that you are vulnerable, the Packet Landing Marina is vulnerable to storm surge. And then those, the, uh, the, the, the risk to storm surge flooding increases as soon as you get to 2070. You can see that much more of the, the parking lot is at risk of flooding at least once a year. So with understanding sea level rise and storm surge, and we understand the historical legacy of packet landing, um, kind of drives our purpose for developing this project. So as we said, we received a CZM grant to uh, go through um, the development of alternative designs. So the purpose of this project is really to increase packet landing's resiliency to flooding by one, developing three alternative designs, two, assessing those alternatives using an evaluation matrix, and three, having the town have an informed decision um, to pick one of the alternatives. So the major goals that the town expressed um, for the project was one, to provide flooding protection from high water level events, and that carries through into the future. Two is to maintain public access for recreational boaters and commercial fishermen. Um, we, again, we know that um, packet landing is, is critical for those activities. And three, um, not in any particular order, but also maintaining the critical access for emergency response. So those are the three goals that really drove the, the, this project forward um, in, in developing these alternative concepts is maintaining these three goals. So then also with con uh, discussions with the town, uh, these were some of the considerations and constraints that the, the, the team um, worked on to make sure we developed um, these concepts is one is we do not want, want to reduce the number of slips or parking spaces, so increase if possible. We want to maintain connection for electricity and the amenities for fishermen, slip holders, and other accessories. We want to aim strategies for the 2050 time horizon with potential phasing to 2070. And then also supplemental benefits to improve wastewater or stormwater runoff would be a plus. So understanding the goals of our project and you know, maintaining the critical access, these are some of the, the considerations we had to develop the concepts with. So I'm actually gonna turn it over to my colleague Cole. He's gonna walk you through the existing facilities and then work directly through uh, the uh, alternative concepts. Great. Thanks, Brittany. Yeah. I just hit the next here, pretty uh, self-explanatory. I'm Cole Bateman. I'm a project manager and professional engineer with Ty and Bond. Uh, happy to present this project this evening for you. So as you all are familiar with the property, um, packet landing, uh, we performed an existing conditions survey using instruments uh, in the uh, image shown on the screen. North is up, the river is uh, to the right in the screen, and that is where the docks are shown. So just a brief overview of the existing site features. Uh, that were part of the uh, alternatives is there's an existing timber wharf on the south end of the property right next to the adjacent residential home. Uh, and with that, there's a, a gangway that also services the docks. There's a timber bulkhead that services the south uh, eastern portion of the property and wraps around on, along the, generally along the property line. It's, it's, it's um, along the uh, south end of the parking lot. 
uh, on the, uh, the, the face, the shoreline of the river, there is a rock revetment that extends the length of the property and, and also on beneath the uh, timber bulkhead, I'm sorry, the timber wharf as well. Uh, and there is uh, then the floating dock system, which I understand many of you are slip holders of. Uh, and also to service the uh, facility, there are currently 19 parking spaces, one of which is a van accessible ADA space. Go to the next. Oops. All right, and these, uh, from the existing conditions survey, along with the goals of the, um, the town and the project team, we've developed these three alternatives, which we're uh, Summarizing in three, uh, three, three terms here, the protect, elevate, and accommodate um, alternatives. I'll start off with the protect. This is a rendering showing uh, the project site from the, the southeast looking towards the parking lot. Um, mainly this alternative one is to protect the existing site in uh, generally the same conditions. Uh, there would be uh, a deployable flood barrier along with a, uh, a sheet pile bulkhead along the perimeter of the project site. That would serve uh, mainly to protect the parking lot as well as uh, allow service to that elevated wharf. The existing rock revetment is, was determined by our team to require some maintenance and repairs. That's being proposed within all alternatives uh, to uh, replace some um, damaged areas. There's some erosion, especially at the north end where the bridge is, uh, and that is proposing all alternatives. Um, the timber wharf on the south side, which services the uh, the water, is is, is um, being proposed as altered in all three alternatives. In this first one, it's being uh, proposed to be raised 1.2 feet approximately to elevation 4.7 um, to access the floats and uh, boardwalk and this design life is approximately 50 to 75 years based on the uh, an annual exceedance probabilities I'm going to go to the plan view um, so again here is uh, the site um, and the proposed alternative so I'll start from the left so it, we're, the, 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 the project uh, this alternative aims to increase the parking on site by one net spot uh, it, um, that is shown closest to the building right now uh, with those four um, darker line areas. There are three spots being left, um, I'm sorry, taken out in the center row, and that is in order to accommodate the main portion of the project, which is to install a sheet pile bulkhead around the perimeter of the property and also along the existing ramp to allow continued access to that timber wharf, which would be um, protected during storm events using a deployable flood barrier between the sheet pile walls. The existing timber uh, uh, ramp would be replaced and may, uh, created to be a little bit more accessible um, and along with the, a gangway with that. Uh, also, um, we have a raised platform for the existing sewer components. I understand that that's an issue right now on site and those would be repaired. Um, I think that generally covers this. I'm sorry, also on the north end of the project site, we're providing an alternative way to access the floats in, in, in gangway uh, during uh, unusually high tide scenarios from an elevated timber bulkhead, I'm sorry, elevated uh, sheet pile bulkhead uh, so that constant access is maintained during um, emergency situations as well as on ordinary high tides. I'll now move to alternative number two. Briefly, alternative number two is a lot like alternative number one um, with the add-on that the parking lot would be raised to elevation seven uh, compared to the existing elevation sloping from approximately elevation four up to elevation seven in the back. Uh, and it would be uh, recovered with relayed with uh, a, a pervious asphalt to allow for stormwater infiltration and, and better suit the needs of uh, the stormwater that runs down um, this site from the road as well as that could you know get up there during a flood scenario. More in depth. I'm sorry. Is this an alternative? Oh, I have to go 
It's all right. Okay, elevate. This is all. I'm sorry. Yeah, I should put into that too. Uh, again, in plan view, this is uh, this is the same. Uh, this is alternative two, the elevate option, where it's a, a lot like alternative number one, uh, except we're increasing the parking lot elevation by a couple pe a couple feet by the south end, uh, with the per pervious asphalt. At the north end, there's a little bit of a difference in grade elevation in order to accommodate the gangway as well compared to alternative two. Let's see. Let's see. Accommodate. Um, okay, this is alternative three, which is the accommodate alternative that was uh, proposed initially. This alternative is, uh, is, is otherwise known as sort of the, um, the green alternative where the project team is considering and the town's considering uh, or proposing in this alternative retreating the face of the sheet pile bulkhead more inland towards the, towards the parking lot in order to accommodate some sort of, uh, of uh, wetland or, or um, salt tolerant vegetated meadow um, just land, just seaward of the the proposed uh, sheet pile bulkhead. In order to, uh, it would, it, there's multiple reasons to consider this alternative. One would be the permitting feasibility, as well as just a a, a sort of um, matching the existing shoreline. If one were to zoom out in a Google Earth view, which I'll show you in the next slide, it looks to be a little bit more in line with the uh, existing shoreline. Let's see which one was it. This one. I'll accommodate. So, as you can see in this uh, alternative, the plan showing on the right, uh, the hashed, hatched area um, to the right of that new sheet pile bulkhead. Oh, I can actually point, can I? Mm -hmm. the red button. Red button. Right here. That's handy. This would be the new salt tolerant uh, meadow area. Uh, with this alternative, we um, would have a, um, a reduction in parking spots. Uh, we would go down from seven, uh, 19 parking spots to 17. Uh, and that is, there's uh, five new spots closer to the building, but the center aisle would be lost. And again, this would be to mimic sort of the shoreline as you continue up and down. And with that being said, those are the three alternatives. Thanks, Cole. Uh, so after we've developed the alternatives, uh, we wanted to assess each of these alternatives and how they respond to the project goals. So we created an evaluation matrix, um, which is a useful decision-making tool to select the preferred alternative. So you remember the outcome of this project is the town is gonna make a decision on what alternative um, is gonna um, serve as um, the project in the next phase. Um, so we evaluated each of these alternatives as they respond to the project goals, what it would take for implementation of each of these uh, alternatives and the potential impacts um, or benefits to the environment. So our grid looks something like this. Um, again, this will help the town decide which alternative aligns with the project goals and the required function that we don't want to lose at this site. Uh, so you'll see, you know, we have an option for maintain or do nothing. We don't have any renderings or plans for this option, but just wanted to let you know that we did still evaluate the, the, the impacts of doing nothing. Um, and then you'll see the description for each of the alternatives and the individual criteria under each of those themes that we've already discussed. So what the coastal resiliency um, increase here would be the impacts, the number of parking spaces, um, and if there's potential for phasing. So is there a feature of each of these alternatives that we can implement first, and then based on funding or capacity of resources, can we add on the continuation of the, the construction? That's what we mean by the phasing potential. Um, and then we've also scored along implementation, so what are the potential permits you need, the approximate cost, maintenance cost, 
um, and the potential impacts of construction to the use and function of the site. Um, for environmental impacts, we considered impacts and benefits for the coastal resources and impacts of stormwater. So first to address the project goals, I'm not gonna go through every one of these details, but the general gist of the project goals um, criteria is that there is increased resiliency to future high tide and extreme water le uh, level events up to 2070. So by doing um, all of these, pro doing any one of these uh, alternatives would help you uh, become less flooded um, during mean high water events and extreme water events up to 2070. And then in 2070, you could reevaluate evaluate what the sea level rise has, has done through that time and if you need to reassess any potential tidal um, inundation impacts. Um, we've concluded that some, there's some added storm event protection through 2030. Um, again, I wanna, would like to reiterate that packet landing is not a flood pathway and that potentially could uh, um, handle some periodic storm surge flooding. Um, to highlight alternatives one and two, do increase the number of parking spaces to 20. Um, alternative three decreases the parking spaces to 17. Um, and we've decided that each alternative can be phased. So again, there's features of each of these alternatives that could be, imp could be implemented in a phased approach and could build on top of each other. So, you know, if the town decided to implement alternative one now, there's room to implement the other existing alternatives to build upon the previous work. So in lines of the potential implementation impacts, um, I think we're all aware that each alternative will require permitting. Um, we did a general idea of the things we would have to consider. These aren't set in stone, um, but this gives an idea of the, the permits that we would have to explore as we go through the next phase. Uh, approximate construction costs are highest for alternatives two and three, that's the elevate the parking lot, um, and then pulling the row of parking um, for alternative three also increases construction costs. Uh, general maintenance costs, so that's the cost associated with annual or semi-periodically periodic maintenance costs, are lowest for alternatives one and two. Staff, um, what to consider for the town is that alternative one, would require um, a staff member to deploy the temporary flood barrier. As Cole mentioned, that aside the, the sheet pile bulkhead, there's um, a deployable barrier to kind of close off the, the timber wharf to flooding. So that would include um, staff time to, to deploy. Um, and then temporary impacts to use and access during construction, um, that's expected. Any time a construction project, uh, there's going to be temporary impacts to use and function. So in terms of emergency response, uh, we would suggest temporarily storing emergency boats elsewhere um, um, if during construction it is inaccessible. For environmental impacts, uh, we believe there's minimal impacts to coastal resources for alternatives one and two. Um, in its current configuration, uh, um, the, the rock revetment was considered a coastal bank, which acts as a vertical buffer for providing coastal flood protection. Uh, in salt tolerant vegetated meadow, an alternative three could enhance flood resiliency, uh, allowing for maybe some stormwater drainage and infiltration um, and things like that. Uh, significant stormwater impacts is considered um, significant in alternative one um, because from the timber wharf there's a pitch down into the parking lot. Um, we would need to consider sluice gates, French drains, and water treatment units um, to take care of any, salt, uh, any stormwater that gets blocked behind that sheet pile wall and flood barrier, deployable flood barrier. So there's a lot of information that I just um, skimmed over, but I hope this gives you an idea of, of the things that we've considered, um, the impacts that we've discussed for each of these alternatives. And with this information, uh, the town will be able to 
uh, determine or select um, a preferred alternative. So the next steps, the next steps for this project um, is we wanted to uh, do a public meeting to provide an opportunity for community feedback. So thank you everyone who's joined us online. Thank, thank you for everyone who's here in person. Um, it's critical that we receive feedback and comments um, and, and participation, so thank you. Um, the town will use any feedback and further discussions with my team and, and Cole's team to select a preferred alternative. Um, we intend to complete a final report by June 30th, 2024. Um, also planning to do um, a select board update meeting. Um, and then finally, uh, we're gonna discuss in the next couple of weeks, the potential for entering the next phase of the project. So this could mean a 50, 60% design and possibly working through permitting. So if you're online or in the room right now, um, if you want to provide feedback, uh, we do have a QR code. If you use your picture option, taking a photo with your phone, you can scan this QR code and it will open up a public forum form that has a picture of each of the alternatives and an opportunity for you to provide your feedback for each of these alternatives. Um, those feedback and comments and questions will be collected until June 24th. So it's just under two weeks. Um, so if you wanted to provide feedback, this is your opportunity. Sure. So the the question was, uh, we got a CZM grant to fund this project, but does this need to go to town meeting for approval for next phase or for to complete this project? So we are gonna we are gonna do a shortened presentation at the select boards meeting. And then I think if the town decides to use any public funds to fund the next phase, then it would have to seek approval. But likely at some point before construction or implementation, I go to town meeting to ask for uh, capital money, even if it's for a match to another grant for, to implement the project. So at some point, this would go to town meeting floor, I'm sure. But each, each phase will be presented to the select board. Isn't uh, coastal zone management money, public money also? Where do they get their money from? Steve, <laughs> Steve do you want to answer this one? It's all mine, no. Yeah, state Massachusetts funds. Yeah. Yeah. All public. Yep, correct. All public, right? Right, so we've, we've been really successful even through all of the steps that we my second slide was talking about how we got here have been pretty much matched by state funding so unless there was you know 10 percent or 20 percent match um whether it's in kind staff time or some type of money it's all been approved through town meeting but most of it has been grant funded there was a match for this project that was um approved at town meeting for the design for this alternatives analysis. Right. Yeah. So I just want to finish off and then we'll go with more questions. But um, I just wanted to say thank you to the town. It's been lovely to, to work with them to go through this process um, and then also CZM for providing funding. Um, and again, my name is Brittany Hoffnagel. My email is up there and so is, so is Coles. Do so you have any concerns or questions? You can contact us. Um, any questions towards next phase or the site itself, maybe get directed to Bill. Um, but with that, um, we can open up for more questions, comments, feedback. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. In phase one, will the wall be three feet high? Y yes. If you're going to, yeah, if you're going to. The board just goes back from that. Seven, that elevation is sitting at seven feet, but yeah. the existing elevation will be 4.7 at the worst. 
I knew I'd get this question. <laughs> so um, we are aware that the bridge work is going to happen. So the question was, is this work going to conflict with the bridge getting worked on? Um, my current understanding that within the next year, the RFP for the construction is going to happen. So any phase of this project um, is going to take longer than the next year. So. Our next phase is really that 60% design and the permitting, and then to actually do construction, it's probably another five years out. So I think we would not do any construction on this site until after the bridge work is completed. But we are considering that and understand that that's important to the town. But even the next level of design, the next level of design would be after the um, plans for the bridge um, are looked at so that th 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 they would coincide the two projects we would work with um, uh, mass highway uh, mass dot um, you know to share the plans and make sure that they mesh yeah i mean it would be really important that if if any of this area on the northern side of the site was going to be impacted by the new bridge construction, we'd want to know that and make sure that the new updated design can meld um, well with whatever changes might happen. Any other questions? Yeah? There's no plan to change the nature and use of it as it stands. You mentioned earlier a kayak launch or something, but you don't have None of these involve plans to change the purpose or nature. So the question was, is there any plans to change the existing function of the site? Um, no. So we want to maintain the existing use. So for commercial fishermen, recreational boat slips, and um, storage of emergency response boats. So that was something that Bill stated up front that we don't want to expand the site use. So not a kayak launch, <laughs> not a fishing pier op opportunity. So really just, it's a public marina, but definitely still has some site restrictions that the town wants to maintain. We are gaining the... Um the kayak racks at the New River Rock Park. Um, so the, the town is fitting in those, um, you know, those desires for those types of recreational uses um, in certain areas. So we, you know, we are cognizant of, of trends and, and um, those recreational activities. Any other questions? All right, well, that's the end of the presentation. Um, so everyone online, thank you for joining us. Have a great night. Um, for those in the room, um, we are scheduled to be here till 7.30, so if you wanted to take a gander around the alternatives, we have a couple staff here. We have Tiare and Linnea, Bill and Cole and myself. If there's any feedback, comments, concerns that you have with the alternatives, We'll be here to answer or hear those comments. But for now, that's the end of the presentation. Um, and we'll spend the rest of the evening um, here in person with the, the 3D renderings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brittany.